Well, hello everyone and welcome back to another RTS update on the project that I have been showing a series about how you build an RTS. So as you can see, this was the last step it was on doing the robot asset and I showed a bit on Blender, how to do the particles in Godot. So I think I got a little bit carried away with the asset creation because I do not think that is very important. Because there's a lot of other things that this project is missing from the RTS perspective. And I think that I got a little bit carried away by the creation of assets. And as you can see, this project is taking shape graphically. We can see we have some landscape objects and I am starting to build the robots and stuff. And I had some soldiers as well. But I think I got a little bit carried away. So I have decided to actually rebase the entire project back again to the newest good version and also apply a bunch of changes to the project structure as I've discussed in other videos. And I have so far taken this project and have recreated a little bit. So this is the step that I am on in and I have been focusing lately on the big picture of the RTS genre. So I want to do a little update on this RTS project and I have recreated using the information and code that I have from the previous project. So as you can see, we have a little bit of a playable state here. I have the RTS camera running. I have the selection system working as a shed. I have a little small transition on the alpha here going on using a twin and we have some objects we can move around and we can also select them. So I think that with this basic prototype I will be able to extend the project teaching things that I want to work on on the future videos on the RTS project. Things like building interface systems and also adding a combat mechanic to your RTS project, things like that that I have not discussed on the previous one. So from the from my perspective as a developer, I think I got carried away and I think it's a little bit, I should take a little bit of I step back. So while I have imported this project successfully to Godot for, for developer 4, I think it's very unstable. And as you can see, there's a lot of things that I was working behind the scenes, but it was stuff that I could be placing on future videos. But so far, while I have some things here that are still missing, like the fog of war system and also the game data structure is not ready for this project as well. So if you ever play RTS games, there is a bunch of different systems that need to work together. And also I have been thinking about things that I want to exclude from this project. For instance, things like multiplayer, I do not plan on developing here on Gudio, mainly because I am not a multiplayer expert. And while I think if I have studied some of it, I could actually develop the project using multiplayer aspects. I don't think for my case is going to be that useful because I don't plan to make this a multiplayer game. I rather make this game more interesting by adding concepts like extra missions, some kind of randomized mechanics of the mission like randomized objectives for you to eliminate certain specific units or for you to develop units that can advance in experience and have levels or ranks. Like a soldier can get up to a higher rank by surviving a few battles and again is going to gain more XP and also advance its HP and attack, things like that. So I think I have other mechanics to do. So my plan for this project is to make a single player experience with the RTS in general, but I do not want to ex to exclusively imitate those old RTS genres. While I have based some of the aspects of that project of the old RTSs in my project, I think I can spice it a little bit and keep it a little more modern with some things like experiencing levels like that. And maybe also do some kind of tactical hero thing like you've seen in a lot of modern strategy games. I want to test a couple of things with this project. And also this video is being sponsored by Brilliant. Brilliant is all about helping you become a better problem solver. It helps you to develop those core skills that you're going to use on computer science or anything related to logic or math. Because these things are quite complicated to teach and they take a little while for you to learn. 
But by using Brilliant with their interactive methods and specialized tools, I think you can learn a lot faster. And there are a bunch of different courses specialized in different topics for you to be learning different things. And the way they, they teach you on this new information is through interactive methods. So Brilliant through its interactive methods allows you to learn faster than if you are reading just a book that are going to teach you the concepts you need. So if you want to learn new topics that I have mentioned or you are interested in becoming a better problem solver and you want some guidance or tools to help you along the way, I think Brilliant is an excellent choice. It's going to help you a lot because this tool is specialized in that. You can try everything Brilliant has to offer for free for full 30 days. Check out the main link on this video description or you can also scan the QR code that you see on the screen. You will also get 20% off an annual premium subscription. So thank you Brilliant for sponsoring this video. So this is a very quick update I want to show you and talk about the RTS because I think that I have left you guys out in the dark because I have stopped posting tutorials and if you were making the project you were like wait hold on there's a bunch of things that we need to add but I think now that I have a stable project again I can start working on it adding more things that I did not add on the previous tutorials and I don't think that you guys are all that interested in the creation of assets for games because that is part of the job as an artist. So as a game artist, you are going to develop your assets for your game and each game is going to have a different style of assets that's going to require a different level of experience, of developing, of workplace, so different things for you to acquire assets for your game as a different style. So each, each different game is going to have its own unique style and you're going to need unique assets for them so in the case of this little project i just want to create a little bit of a system so you can actually reproduce in your own rts projects so if we were to observe this a little bit and see what is up to you're going to see that this have a big interface panel down here and if you were to plan and make this inside of Godot, have you ever wondered how you could make this and develop this inside of Godot? So I have a couple of ideas of how I'm going to be making this. And there's also here a context interface panel for things like building other things and also to training units and developing tech. So there's a bunch of different things we can actually consider when making this game inside of Gudio. So for instance, things like grabbing resources. I have tried to do a little bit about that, but there's a bunch of different things we can start working on. So yeah, the RTS genre is a very complex subset of mechanics and trying to develop a complete game like that takes a little bit of a while and I think it's quite possible to do it and we should get some of, the, of these things working on on the next tutorials. So mainly things like I plan to develop is the interface. So we have to add a bunch of different buttons and connect them to actions of our units and things like that. So yeah, those things are going to take a little bit of planning and I also am going to experiment a little bit and try to find solutions that could work for every single case. This is the small update that I wanted to do for you guys on the RTS thing and I mainly will continue to work on it. With, this, with the perspective of trying to develop a bigger things, so the main mechanics of the game. So the minimum viable product for the RTS genre is like building structure, resource management. So yeah, we'll be adding things like training and building units and stuff like that. Also, maybe work with a little bit of resources and integrate them into the player interface, things like that. So. I want to just do a quick update because this is what I have been working on in the last months and I have been working as well so this is taking a little bit more time than I wanted to but I think you guys deserve an update. So if you've been following this series as it has been a big part of my channel growing up I'm going to be working on this as well. So if you see the third person series and you were worried that I was going to abandon the RTS altogether, no. I am just working on it behind the scenes. Because you're a game developer, you want to work on different projects, and I even wanted to start a first person series. So let's not get off the track here. I want to improve the RTS series a little bit and show you a little more what you can do inside of Gideo. And also, I have updated a lot of things, so the code should be a lot cleaner, and the tutorials from here on out 
I'll start going to be a little bit better than what I did previously. However, if you are trying to follow this like a linear tutorial thing, this might not be the best place for you to follow because the first tutorial was what a bit of a mess because I was also trying different things and it was also experimenting while I was also learning how to actually make tutorials. So yeah, it's kind of a mess. But I think this series still has a great potential and value for you guys. And I see a lot of people commenting on these videos and people are interested in the RTS genre like I am. So let's continue doing videos for this one. So I'll be continuing to make videos about this. And I just wanted to update you guys on what I have been working on. So also I think for things like game data on the RTS project and things like that, I'm going to try a little different things. Maybe try some simple system that you can do inside of Godot and try to exclude all different external tools despite the advantages of using a, sp a spreadsheet editor for you to edit the game data and stuff. So I think I'm going to try a little couple of things differently here. So yeah, this is what I have been up to. And hopefully you guys still are interested in this project for you to also keep watching. So yeah, that is what I have been up to. And hopefully you have enjoyed this little update here. And I'm going to be posting a little more videos on future weeks here. To improve this project a little bit so we're going to be adding the interface and things like that so hopefully you're still interested in the series and i'll see you on the next video so thank you guys for watching